Hello, I am very excited for today. We have Hope Smith joining us to talk about self-care for the Unlikely Heroes 30 Days Move for Freedom. And I really have so much respect for Hope. She's a really incredible human and also just has a huge heart for people. And there we go, here's Hope, let me add you. Hello, Hope. There you go. Okay, I hope she'll be on any second. Um, there, I feel like every person has something different. Hi, Hope. Hi. It's so Hi, good. it's so good to see you. You too. I haven't seen you in so long, I miss you. <laughs> I know, it feels like the pandemic has made it hard, but hopefully today feels like a visit. <laughs> Yeah. Um, I am very excited to have Hope Smith with us, with us today. Hope, I feel like every single person has something unique about them that they bring to the table. There's something really special about every single person and, and their unique essence. But one of the things that I love about you, Hope, is that I feel like you really see people. And like you really recognize them. And um, I remember when you spoke at one of our events, you talked about just seeing someone that you'd pass like on the side of the road and how it had impacted you. And I just remember like those moments that I spent with you and it just, you show up for people. And I know you and your husband, Robert, have this huge heart for philanthropy and you help so many people. Um, and it's just an honor to have you today. But the things that I love about you also is that you have started a brand called Mother. Did I get right? You did, yeah. Okay, good. That is for self-care and putting moms first and making sure that moms are aware of the importance of taking care of themselves, putting themselves first. And I love the journey behind your brand. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Sure. Um, so when I met Erica, <laughs> Erica, when we met, I mean, it had to have been like 10 plus years ago. Maybe. Plus, yeah. yeah. I don't know. Um, and clearly it wasn't a mother, it wasn't a wife, I didn't have a skincare line. But when I became pregnant, I started looking for creams to support pregnancy, like stretch mark, itchiness, different things. And then I just took it into my own hands because I didn't find something that wasn't like water was the first ingredient. Um, even at drugstore, I'd see things that were supposed to prevent stretch marks, but it'd be like the 13th ingredient. And so I really wanted to make something that worked. And so I did. Yeah. So oh, you've got twins you've got four children um you've got adorable twins so you've got your hands full because they're still young what are your favorite tips for self-care in the midst of being a busy mom my number one tip always is calendar so i use i live by the calendar so if in the calendar i put that i have a workout because workouts make me feel good and produce endorphins and make me a lot nicer of a person um and more patient um, I will absolutely show up to that workout. So like anything that's yeah. in the calendar is like Bible. You show up to it and you do it no matter what. And so I also use that to my advantage. Whereas like right now I'm working from home. My mother team is working in New York. Um, and my kids are home. And so like to make sure that I see them and like to try to have yeah. that, I actually use my calendar to like block out hours and it's like empty hours, but I have to block it out. Otherwise somebody or something will take it. Yeah, that's important. Um, Hope, you have this huge heart for people and, and philanthropy and helping people. Like, what's your heart behind that? I don't know. I mean, I think I've always had it. I, be I just believe that a lot of people ask how we focus our philanthropy or like, you know, my husband's focus is very different than mine, um, but then they kind of meet at the top. Um, mine, I give on a, you know, I give to smaller organizations a lot, whereas a lot of his are like very large art organizations. So I do small. And then I always say, I've said it a thousand times that you give where your tears fall. And so for me, um, you know, if I'm impacted by some, somebody's story or, you know, somebody that started this great initiative like you did, you know, and I hear the story and I'm touched by it and I walk away and I'm thinking about it or it brings tears to my eyes. I know that's where I'm going to give money. So yeah. it's where you want to write a check. So 
um, I wish I could write checks all the time to like individual people, but it's actually against the law. I mean, just like <laughs> people money. So I need types of organizations because you have to have a place, you know, like a 501 c three to donate to. Um, so that's what it is. If it touches me, I want to do it. A lot of the um, groups that I give to is like women and children. Mm -hmm. So I love women, children, and then education. So you had five girls, our girls, to your ranch for a week. And um, like you did so many things with them. Took us to pizza, went white water rafting. Like there were just so many things that you were doing. That was so fun. But like one of my favorite moments when you were hanging out with our girls is that one of the girls came over to you and she just threw her arms around you and said, you feel like a mom to me, like mama hope. And that's, she's never said that to anybody else. And I really think that that's because you do mean what you say that you, you, where your tears fall is what you're called to. And you saw her and she felt seen by you. And I feel like when you see someone that it, it really does make them start to believe in themselves that they can do something because someone saw them. And I still love that moment. I know you remember it. A moment too that brings tears to my eyes because we really did bring them into this home and like a family, right? So they mm -hmm. sat at the table and they're like with us and they had, I think Hendrix was there. So mm -hmm. they, for the first time in a maybe a minute, she was like inside of this yeah. family for them, but she was inside this like bubble, you yeah. know, still very at home. So I like that. Yeah, it was uh, the first time I heard a couple of them giggle was when we were at the ranch. And I, it was just such a great moment for me. I know they're um, all so well now, too. Yeah, I'm they are. Impressive. So, Hope, what is your best advice for moms who are working moms, who are struggling, who don't have, like, where do they start with self-care? Ooh. Um, honestly, it's finding time which is like our most valuable <laughs> commodity and it's like scheduling yeah. so if that means that you give your kids more screen time that day then you just give your kids more screen time that day um but yeah. it can start with shower it could start with blocking out like i do i block out empty slots in my calendar or maybe it's like that workout that's going to make you feel amazing for the week um but it's little things like one thing that i do every day is and it's my own product because you can do it with any product. But my body butter changed the way I self-care on a daily basis because it actually takes time to do. Yeah. Um, whereas before I did, but that wasn't my routine at all. So it's just, yeah. and time is just so precious. And it's like the thing you can't buy and the thing nobody has, everybody else wants to take from you. So it's really a, you know, the most precious thing you have. Yeah, I've been watching your videos on skincare and, um... And we had someone on this month that was talking about the importance of even just touching your face properly. And I think that was one of the things that I've really learned from watching your video is that it's important to just give yourself that moment, that extra time as part of your routine. Um, what do you think stops people from putting themselves like in the midst of the busiest situations, um, stops them from trying to learn how to do self-care? Mm. I think it's very easy to just say yes to everything. And then you forget like it's coming and you have to follow through with that kind of thing. Or um, it's very easy to just make yourself last, especially if you're, you know, motherhood does something to you and you don't have to be a mother to have this in you, but you know, there's just a caretaker that comes out or it came out for me and it made like anything I was going to do, I was going to, rush through it and hurry because I had to get back to somebody. Yeah. Um, so I, I think that we're also part of like this culture where it's like busy, being busy is super celebrated mm -hmm. and applauded and it's like a bragging right. Whereas I try to remind myself that it's not and that you don't like, that's not the ultimate goal in life, like to be busy and do, you know, you have to have balance. And I don't think anybody gets it right all the time. Sometimes it's all work for yeah. me. Mm. And at the end of the day, and I like kiss my kids goodnight. And sometimes as an entrepreneur, I get to block out whole days, three days in a row, or, you know, it's just a balance. You just try to balance at the end of the day. Yeah, that's really important. Um, Hope, like, why do you like Unlikely Heroes? What are your thoughts? I love Unlikely Heroes. Um, I think that you help the very, the most vulnerable people that, um, 
you know, I'll break down and cry. I don't want to do this. Um, <laughs> that's so bad. I cry. I'm such a cry. Okay. <laughs> so see, this is why I should be writing more checks. Um, <laughs> I cry too. Yeah. Um, but you, unlike the heroes, you take people out of the most horrific conditions. As a mother myself, I can't imagine like, my babies being taken advantage of in the way that these kids are taken advantage of. Yeah. Um, you know, there's so many ways that people get into sex slavery or abuse and all of them, you know, um, none of them are this like child or woman's fault. None of mm -hmm. them. And so I just see that, the work you do to really turns people's lives around. So they go from being this, you know, there are there, it's a victim, you know, that's preyed upon mm -hmm. to like empowered people that go through rehab therapy, mm -hmm. uh, lots of rehabilitation. So it's not and and I've seen you see it through. So a lot of times you can work with somebody that is, you know, has gotten to sex slavery and you can put them through some rehab, but if you don't give them means to create a life and make money and do things like that, they could fall back into it very easily. Mm -hmm. So like mm -hmm. seeing them through to the end so that they're truly, truly um, rehabilitated and can go out into the world and, you know, have a career and, you know, make a life for themselves, whether it's because they got their master's degree or they became a hairstylist or whatever it was, they have these skills. Right. And mm -hmm. so, taking them and empowering them in that way. I love that part of the story. Yeah, I think that that's one of the things that motivates me the most about working with anyone, but especially with children, is that um, that you really do see change when you walk with people over time. And I think that one of the things that um, is hard about, you know, balancing being, I was a guardian for a while, so I guess that puts me in the mom category a little bit. But, um, you know, you have to be there for the moments that they're processing life. And that's hard because you actually have to show up. And to show up, to be there for someone to have those conversations, you have to also show up for yourself um, for you to really have something that you can give. So I remember one time we we're at the gym and one of the girls was just looking in the mirror and she started saying, I look really fat, I'm so fat. And that was the moment that we were able to stop and then with all of us just start to have a conversation about where's our identity as a woman, where's our self-worth, um, what really matters, what do we want to do with our lives that doesn't have to do with something about the way that we look and how do we get there. And I feel like that, like those are the kinds of things that unless you're, you're showing up, you, you're not even there for those moments to have those conversations. And I know for me, like running a business and being a guardian, it is really hard to find the time and to schedule it. But then I've seen so much breakthrough come from those conversations. And I feel like that's what you do really well. Like even on this talk right now, like you're, I, you're, you're so present and I love that. And I feel like that's like such a key about what we need to do for self care and also in our relationships, because when we're present, I just feel like there's so much breakthrough and then there's, um, like such a depth that comes, then that even becomes like a stronger place for us to like be watered even from our own well. So thank you for championing women, for championing mothers. I love your slogan, which is that, and I know you'd say it better than I, I can, but um, it's about being the best mother you can be no matter what it looks like. And mm -hmm. um, like showing up to break the rules, to be better moms and to be there for us as women and for our kids. And I think that's really, I love that. Yeah. Is there anything else you want to share? Or um, no, I mean, um, you know, I'm so lucky that I met you when I did. I'm so lucky that you share stories. Your emails that go out are so important and I think they reach a lot of people I love. Um, you know, the very first story and how I got involved with Unlikely Heroes, just to mention quickly before we get off. Um, yeah, please. I, it, I remember Joy, of course you do. Mm -hmm. Joy, yes. And Island, and she She's was two years old. Two years old, and mm -hmm. this was completely just horrific, but the, at the end result, it was, you know, a very nice story because she, you know, I'm sure she's much older now. Um, but going through the program was so important and she had got the care that she needed and the rehab she needed. And 
you know, all the medical help because of you. So you're mm -hmm. just doing great work. Thanks. Yeah, Baby Joy, just to fill in some of those details, if, if you guys don't know the story, she was two years old. She'd been trafficked. Um, she needed to have seven reconstructive surgeries um, after she was raped, including full vaginal reconstruction. And um, we, the, the case obviously came in as an emergency case. She had to be put in the hospital. And um, you really got on board to help us make it possible for her to go to a private hospital in Thailand and not have to be at a public hospital, which is huge for her care. It took her two weeks to smile. Just a two-year-old, that's a really long time to just wait to smile. And then um, she started laughing a couple weeks later when she got um, given this like light bright horsey that was like this toy that just meant so much to her. And we had to have 24 seven nursing care with her for a couple months. And then at, we, after she was in her care for about six months, we were able to place her in a forever home. So she does have a really good ending to her story, which is that she's in a family who loves her and is caring for her and putting her first. So yeah, I love those. Those are the stories that, that make it worth it. So thank you, Hope. I love you so much. I wish I could come see you. And hopefully I get to see you soon and Robert and the kids. Yeah, I hope so. Thank you, Erica. Yeah, thanks for joining us. Bye, guys. Bye.